Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one I'm going to be showing you uh, some quick tips and tricks. I'm going to be using my game as an example to show you uh, some things about the UI with canvases and scaling and uh, making your game for different aspect ratios. It's quite it's, it's quite complex, it's, it doesn't take that long to get your head around it, but if you've never done it before then it can be quite overwhelming and there's quite a few things that um, you need to just kind of fiddle with until you get it right and I'm going to show you about that in a minute. Uh, I want to start off with thanking my Patreons. Thanks to Paul Robinson, Fulbaum, and Wesley for their $5 donations on Patreon. If anyone else would like to help out, then the link's in the description below. But apart from that, let's get into it. So, um, what do we have here? Well, we've got my game that I'm currently redoing the UI on. I am redoing it because I found quite a few um, things that I need to do that I didn't do the first time around. So, one, um, which I highly recommend, is replacing all text components with Text Mesh Pro. So, text. Um, I don't know, this experience text, um, here we go, uh, scene, 2D, yeah. So for example, right, on this experience text, use Text Mesh Pro because one, the quality is much better, two, you can um, get like shadowing on it very easily, better than the actual built-in like shadow script. Obviously you can write your own shades and stuff, but this it's just built into text, text Mesh Pro. I've already done a video on Text Mesh Pro, so watch that. I'm not going to go over Text Mesh Pro again here, but basically all my text components I've used Text Mesh Pro, and it's just just better. There's so much more you can do with it, and it also just looks nicer. And Unity actually has it like built in now, so it's um, if you're on an older version of Unity, you, may, you might have to get it from the package manager, but in the newer versions, it is actually like included for you because Unity bought it off the third party company or whoever developed it so that shows how important how good it is um second of all canvases so when i first made everything i used one canvas and had all my ui panels on that and just had it all hierarchically like sorted out but now um <coughs> sorry after watching a unity performance video and just you know video about yeah, performance and ui stuff um it one thing you might not know about uh, canvases, so if we go to our like menu canvases, um, on a canvas, whenever something changes, like text changing, images changing, uh, maybe animations, I'm not sure if animations count, but basically if something changes on a on the UI, everything else on the same canvas gets redrawn to the screen. Now, if you have one canvas parent and all your panels childed, then what happens is when one thing is updated, like this mana UI, everything else gets redrawn. Now, you know, you won't see that big of an impact to performance, maybe on a good PC, but one, on lower end PCs you might see it, and two, it's generally a good thing to just, you know, n not be lazy and let things um, have little impact performances. Because if you have lots of things that are making little impact performances, eventually you'll start slowly, your game will become laggier and laggier and you'll not know why. And because they're like little things, they'll all be harder to detect. So it's just a good idea to have canvases on separate things. So for example, menu canvases under here, pause canvas under here. Um, we've got these different parts of it. And then we've got a settings canvas beside of it, which has um, the settings buttons on. If you want to actually see that, if I press play, um, we have, let's just let it go. We've got escape, resume settings, uh, exit, resume obviously brings you back, escape brings you back, settings brings you here. This is a separate canvas. Graphics, audio controls, audio graphics control, whatever, and then close. So that's all on a separate canvas, which just means that whenever anything happens to this, it doesn't have to rewrite this, it doesn't have to um, do anything to the canvases above it. Um, one other thing about canvases is that they um, inherit from the canvases above them. So this pit pause canvas inherits from the menu canvas, um, most of its stuff then you can add extra components on and remove them. So graphic raycaster literally just means that when you click on it, it can receive raycast. So like if you had some UI that perhaps was just visual and didn't have anything to click on it, you would not have a graphic raycaster or you wouldn't need to. So for example, let's say going between scenes, you got a loading screen and the loading screen is literally just there to, you know, hide the game loading stuff in basically. Um, you would just not have a graphic raycaster on it. Um, one other thing is the canvas. Um, can have the canvas uh, group component, where is it? Player hood canvas, I got one here. So this canvas group, well, this is one thing I didn't know about for a long time. I thought if you wanted to like um, fade out everything on a canvas, you would have to perhaps like get all of the image components and the text components and turn down the alpha. But you know, I, I thought usually when there's something that um, seems really simple, but you can only think of a complex way to do it, 
or like an inefficient way to do it, there's usually a more efficient way. So canvas group actually has an alpha value which controls the alpha of everything that is childed to it. So if I wanted to like go to a cutscene or something, I can just set this to zero or like fade this out from one to zero and it would just get rid of everything under that canvas. So that controls the um, minimap, the hop, the, sorry, the, um, what's he call it? Crosshair, the crosshair and the hop bar is all controlled by this. Um, then if I go below that, we've got the crosshair canvas, which just has the crosshair on it. Um, then we've got the hot bar. The hot bar um, is all of this, and obviously below the hot bar, we've got the hot bar background and the left bit and the right bit, and then the, the experience and the the, the orbs. You know, it's, it's all there um, under its own canvas. So if anything on here updates, it only updates uh, visually there, which just saves performance a lot. Um, then the screen fader. A lot of this stuff, if you do recognize it, I've actually not not just copied it, but a lot of it I've um, learnt from following the Unity 3D game kit. So Unity themselves released a game a while back. Um, clear, oh, they released the project for the game, just like they recently have with the first-person shooter project with networking. They released a kind of small uh, third-person game where you run around and you kill some things and then you go to the next level, and it's got some good coding in it and good like design. Uh, it's on their website, the Unity 3D Game Kit, I think it's called. Um, and I, I've just, like... <coughs> sorry, Christmas illness, so... Um, I've taken quite a few of the design techniques they've used, which I can obviously go into in uh, future videos, but this video is mainly about UI. So I'm obviously, the main things I've told you so far is use text mesh pro instead of text and use, um, well, if you don't know about using text mesh pro, I've already got a video on that. And then if you, um, don't already, then use lots of canvases. Now, obviously don't make a canvas for everything new, make a canvas for every kind of separate thing. It's up to you to just, you know, you can... You probably can have too many canvases, but, you know, have a canvas for, like, this part of the UI, this part of the UI, that part of the UI, you know, different things should have their own canvases. Um, like this minimap, for example, if I go scene, and we go to the minimap, uh, so it's on the player hood, you see we've got the minimap canvas, which is here, and its anchor points are all at the top left. Um, and then we've got the minimap background, which has an aspect ratio fitter, which means that no matter how the screen scales, it stays an aspect ratio of one, so one across one down it's a square and then this image scales with the parent so this like well obviously i can't just scale it from this it is stuck to its parent fit in parent so if i go to the parent now obviously i can change the canvas but even when i do it stays a square because i want it to be a square so like now if i zoom out and i went to um if i pulled the game window over here and went to free aspect and you see here as i like scale this um out or scale it in it stays as a square at the top right. Now, obviously, if I uh, went too far, then it would go off the end, but, you know, that's fine. And as I go down, it actually scales it. Um, so you can play on different size monitors. It all scales pretty well. And that leads me on to my next point, so anchor points. Um, these things here. Basically, what an anchor point does is it means it, it limits an area of the screen to what can go where. So let's say, for example, I've got my pause menu. So if I go to the um, menu, pause canvas, I'll turn it on for now. <coughs> oh. um, I have the pause canvas, which is just the canvas. Then we have the background, which is just the fade out thing. That scales to the parent. So as the screen size changes, that will always cover the background, um, which is this option here at the bottom right. You can press Alt to actually set it. So like, let's say I've got it like this. It still scales to its parent, but if I press Alt and click, it'll like resize it to be that. And if you press control, uh, sorry, shift, it anchors it as well. Um, or it sets the pivot point, sorry, which is this. Um, so if we go to this black strip, which is this, which has all of that on, you see I've set the anchor points to be the far right of this and then left here. Now, as long as you make everything scale properly, so saying this scales up and down, right? So as the screen goes up and down, this will go up and down. As it goes left and right, it does change a little bit, but... Um, I've set it to be this portion of the screen because as you notice when you change this it's a percentage um, black strip it's a percentage of the screen it's obviously 50 50 is the middle right here so you're basically with these anchor points you're deciding what percentage of the screen that thing gets so that when you resize it it still has that percentage of the screen unless you're doing some really weird scaling sometimes it might mess up um, just make sure when you're working, if you're working on a 1920 monitor or you're working in here with a 1920 aspect ratio, 
um, so like 1920 by 1080. Just make sure that your base canvases have a reference resolution, so scale with screen size, of 1920 by 1080 or whatever you're working with. And then you can do match with uh, width or height. And I go for one on the height. It's preference. If you go for half and half, you might think that's better, but it sometimes doesn't. It's not nice. Uh, you could just go for the width one, but it can mess some things up. It, it's completely your your um, up to you what you're doing and so on. There's different reasons to use different ones, but I would just recommend if you don't know what you're doing, just go your your monitor's resolution, match with width for height, and then scale up to height one. And then <clears throat> we got a settings canvas. So if you look here on the settings canvas, as I set it active, you can actually see. I have then said for the settings canvas, I've set it to there, which locks in with the hell like border thing here. Um, and that goes to the other side of the screen, which basically means this is allowed to use the rest of the screen. But these will never overlap, basically. They're saying you've got this portion of the screen, you've got this portion of the screen, um, and they can't overlap. So you just scale it like this, you know? Um, and it locks on nicely to the corner points and some other panels you can lock on to. Just like when you're scaling things, you can lock them on. So like that can lock there. Um, also, you can when you're scaling this, just like it locks onto other UI components, like the edge of that and the edge of that, it can lock onto these points. So it's actually quite clever. Uh, it makes more sense to put these points in place, then drag your UI to them. Otherwise, it's hard to like set that up right the other way around. Now, it's easy now because these also do the same thing where they lock on to other anchor points like I've got that anchor point there they, they meet up nicely on this line um, so they'll never cross but they can touch so you might want to like do this if you wanted like there to always be a gap but I'm fine with this it works anyway um, so yeah we've got use text mesh pro instead of text uh, use many canvases use your anchor tools and you know make sure all your UI has its own designated area and scales right um, you just gotta be careful with the scaling. It can be a bit overwhelming to get everything working right. Like if I went to my game, right? We're on 1920. If I go to a five by four, see, I mean, no one probably uses five by four monitors now. And it's quite hard to actually get your UI to look right for it. Because if you want everything to work right, like th this works, it just looks bad, but it's a five by four and everything still fits and it's got its own portions of the screen still. So if I go four by three, slightly gets better and better and better. And you'll notice, even as the screen gets wider, the um, minimap stays as a square. This all stays in its portion. This all stays in its portion. And it's all good. Now, I'm not actually playing the game, so I can't unpause. I would have to just... Oops. just have to turn off the uh, player hood. No, the menu canvases. Settings. Off. Pause. Off. Okay. Um, is there anything else to mention about it? Well... Uh, the main components for canvas I've just quickly gone over so canvas this is meant to do the um, what type of canvas it is so o overlay camera I don't actually know the difference between screen space camera and overlay to be honest but I know the difference between world space and overlay so screen space overlay you know UI obviously you've got it on there but world space you can have a UI in your world like you can actually have like for example the um, enemy health bars I've got like here they are uh, UI, but in world space. And then we've got, um, where's the canvas gone? Sort order. So even though hierarchy order is what usually determines rendering, like what renders on top of what, this like overrides it. Sort order for canvases, obviously the order in which uh, they will render. So you can actually just change that value instead of moving stuff around and it will um, make certain things render on top of others. So obviously you just gotta tweak with those numbers to make stuff render right. Cause you want, for example, your hood to render um, underneath <coughs> the pause menu. Otherwise when you pause, this will be on top and it'll look a bit weird. You want your pause to render on top of practically everything. Um, the thing you wanna render on top might be your um, screen fader. If you're going from scene to scene, for example. So like my screen fade um, canvas, I've got it on a uh, sort order 10. So as long as I don't put anything above 10, I mean, I could always go for like 100 on that, for example, and I've got a bigger range. It, it does up to you um, what feels right. And then I wouldn't mess with these. Um, obviously, display, I'm, as far as I'm aware, that just means which monitor. So just go with display one, <laughs> to be honest, your main monitor. And then shader channels, don't bother with that unless you know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing with shaders and canvas shader things. I don't know. Just don't touch that. <laughs> you don't need to, really, unless you've got something specific for it. Um, obviously yep, scaling with screen size which is what you want um, and then the size of your screen you're working on so that when you um, 
position everything, it knows you're on a 1920 display, and then when you resize and go back, you know, it's, it's, the fine, it's fine. Um, leave the reference pixels per unit unless you do actually, you know, using sprites, there you go, you see. Um, if the sprite has pixels per unit, it will cover one unit in the UI. So you can actually, you know, do stuff with sprites and that to make your pixel art look right or your sprite quality. Um, Raycaster just means, you know, you can click on things. And then this is just some code I've got. Uh, pause canvas obviously inherits. Um, oh, I don't know why that's like that. Just put nothing. Um, have I done that on my other ones actually? No. Hmm. Some of them have, some of them have, and that's a bit odd. Yeah, just go for none on that. Um, canvas group, obviously you can tweak the alpha. So for example, if I turn on the the black fade thing and I turn up the alpha and then turn it down, I can fade between scenes. And the benefit is if I, like for the um, loading screen, so I've, set, I've made two, one for the loading screen, which at the moment is the exact same. But if I had like a loading screen with a black bar, oh sorry, with like a loading bar, I could put it on here and it could fade in and out with the canvas if it was on the canvas. And then um, I can have the black fade just be for like going between things that don't need loading bars or maybe if I want it to be, you know, dark and mysterious with no loading bar, there might be some reason to fade the screen and so on. Um, but yeah, I think I've covered enough. Uh, hopefully you've learned something new off this video. I'm going to obviously keep making daily videos or at least as regular as I can do. Uh, feel free or I encourage you to leave suggestions in the comments below. And if you haven't already um, left a like or subscribe, then it would mean a lot to me. Thanks if you do. Um, join our Discord server. The link is in the description below. But apart from that, thanks for watching and goodbye.